Hi and welcome back. So on this breadboard we have the first two out of what will finally be four general purpose registers. Now they can load from the bus and they can assert back to the bus. The bus at the, at the moment is this set of wires in a little U-shape. Now what I'd like to do today is build out the constant register and I think it'd be good to start with a small reminder on what that is and why it's there. So the constant register it's got a lot of the attributes of the general purpose registers we currently have. It can load and assert a value back to a bus, but it's slightly different in that it loads from the memory data bus and asserts to the main bus. And the reason for this is very simply, the control of the main bus is going to be up here on pipeline stage two, and on pipeline stage one is the first opportunity we get to look at an instruction and do something in response to it. And if we don't act on a constant value being stored after the instruction opcode in pipeline pipeline stage one, the fetch unit, pipeline stage zero, is going to read the next byte and try and dispatch it as an instruction. So the constant register is basically just a, a holding location for constant data that comes in as part of an instruction opcode. So looking back at the breadboard, the functionality we need from here is very, very similar to what we've got for the general purpose registers at the moment. There is more logic to add to those, but for the time being, they pretty much do the same kind of thing as the constant register. So I'm going to start building out a copy of these so far as the, uh, the similarity is there. Okay, so that's our main devices present. What we need to do now is start connecting up the inputs and outputs of these chips. Now, the big difference here is that the inputs here will be coming from memory and not from the main 8-bit bus, whereas the outputs will go to the LEDs and to the line driver chip as before. Okay, I think that's correct. Now, what we should probably do is bring in some memory so we can actually test it. Okay, so if you remember, the memory module has this pattern in it and then lots of random data. Okay, so there you go. The data loads successfully. That shouldn't really be a surprise. But now I need to connect the outputs of here back to the 8-bit bus and this row of pins here is going to be the, uh, the easiest approach for that. Okay, well in theory this is all the connections necessary for a constant register. So I can clock forward the memory address and load that value up. Now I need the line for asserting it. So let's find something slightly more visually distinct. There we go. So in theory if I bring this low this should be asserting this value onto the main 8-bit bus and then I can load it into the first register like that. Excellent. Clock memory again, get a different value in there. That's still asserting onto the bus and then I can put that into the second register. Okay now that's um, that's pretty good. Um, now in the last video I had my temporary bus driver board for uh, testing and I had a set of LEDs for outputting now because this register is essentially complete at this point, I've got this space still available on the breadboard. On these two registers, I've got some work I still need to do there in the future. But I think it would be a good idea to put a set of 
LEDs in that just displays the bus for, um, for testing. Take that out of the way while I do it. Okay, so that seems to be working nicely. Let's load a different value in there. So now we can make that one, or that one, or that one, assert to the bus on demand. Outstanding. Okay, so I don't think I've used up very much time, although with all the fast forwarding that I do when I'm plugging the wires in, it's uh, not always the easiest thing for me to keep track of, of what I'm doing in that regard. But I've, my instinct says we've still got plenty of time. So I would like to bring back the bus controller and see if we can uh, test out some of its functionality with these devices. Okay, it does occur to me that we're getting up to the level of complexity where on the pipeline we started to see some power problems. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tuck in some decoupling capacitors everywhere. I honestly don't know how much these help on these boards, but it's one of those things where uh, if you experience a problem and you don't have them, you're perpetually double checking to see whether or not they're having an effect. We did see a, a problem with missing them on the, on the power management chip up here. Okay, so we've got three devices on the bus that can assert to it, two that can load, one with an independent load. I think to make testing see it easier, I'm going to add a switch to the load line on here. Okay, so this switch is generating the control line that would otherwise come from pipeline stage one. So if we've got a different value on the memory bus and click that, that's what we're going to get there. And then later on we can assert it onto the, the main 8-bit bus. Okay, so this board up here. Now we've got two sides to this. We've got the side for um, controlling what asserts to the bus and the side for controlling what loads from the bus. And between these we support up to 15 loads and 16 asserts with just a total of eight control lines. I think that's supposed to be there, but what we need to do is grab some of these lines and see what we can do with them. Okay, let's, um, let's use this spot here for some experimentation. Okay, so the first LED has come on. We don't have 16 LEDs on this, so I suspect the 16th LED up the top, which was, was the one that was, would have been illuminated before. But now we need to tie these control lines in. I'm going to call this device zero, this device one, and device two and three we don't have yet because they would be the next two general purpose registers. So just so we don't get confused later, So yes, I will be calling this the fourth register, or fourth device. Okay, so I would like to tell the constant register to assert to the bus. So if I set the inputs here to four, the fourth LED illuminates over here, and the fourth device is asserting to the bus. Now, I'm then going to use the control line for the second device to tell it to load. So we've got some data there. Sorry, that's the first device. Then I'm going to get another piece of data in memory, load that up into here, and then we can tell 
the actual second device to load that. Okay, now that's um, that's actually pretty good. Now, obviously we've got four control lines here, but what we can do is we can just by making the binary address active here, we can decide which of these devices is going to be on the bus. So I can switch around between these. And at the moment, with just three devices on the bus, having four control lines is, you know, it's not, it's not gaining us anything. But obviously this method is going to allow us to have 16 devices that can assert to the bus and we just have these four control lines. Now over here we have a separate set of four control lines to control what's going to read from the bus. Now at the moment I'm just manually toggling these lines because there is a problem with trying to do this manually in that we have the bus lines here are going to be dis displaying because the cycle of the clock is at the end of its cycle which is where we want to be doing our loading so if I were to wire up the, the load lines to, to this at the moment and just manually toggle them when you change the address around your trigger loads on different things so I'm gonna leave experimenting with this until we've got a, a little bit more driver circuitry that can set the lines in synchronization with the clock and that will make it all work nicely. But I've got a little bit of planning to do now because the next step is to move back to the pipeline and start looking at the circuitry which is actually going to be driving these control lines and I'm going to need a little bit more space for breadboards. So for now, thanks for watching. Goodbye.